for CSC 3100. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Cloud9. This is the development environment that we'll be using for the course. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, signing in, how to create a workspace, um, logging into the workspace, and, and configuring it the way that you would like um, for, um, for doing your development work. Uh, this, uh, this is a highly configurable environment. Um, it's, it's fast uh, as far as being able to fire up um, an instance, uh, a lot faster than using something like uh, Amazon Web Services, for instance. Um, and then the other big thing here is it's free, which is a, a nice benefit. Uh, the workspaces that we do create are going to be um, public workspaces, um, although you will be able to protect them, obviously, but uh, as far as someone accessing the result of your development, um, it is something that uh, will allow me to be able to see uh, the work that you're doing, as well as share that work with uh, with your classmates. You won't be able to share the source code, but you will be able to um, share uh, the end results, which is the, the working systems that uh, you're going to be creating. So you should receive a um, an invitation to this, uh, this system um, as uh, I'll be announcing in class, um, and you shouldn't have to provide a credit card or anything like that to sign in um, or to, to sign up, which is, uh, I think, a big bonus here. Um, and then the other thing is that um, you'll be able to create as many workspaces as you want, um, which is also a very big benefit. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I've already um, signed up for an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign in uh, to the site. So this is a list of the workspaces that I currently have. And you'll see I just have, uh, have one workspace that's in place. I, I create an instance of the Rails tutorial, which uh, is one of the um, environments that you can create. Um, and you'll see here on the main screen, you can create a new workspace. You can also create a new workspace by hitting the plus button up in the upper right hand corner. Um, but also uh, if you're sharing um, workspaces with people, you can share them. Um, and, and so here's a workspace that someone has shared with me. When you create your workspaces, um, you will be sharing those workspaces with me um, so that uh, I can help you debug if necessary, but also so that I can review the source code that you have for, uh, for your projects. So I'm going to go back to workspaces and I'm going to create a new workspace. So this will bring you to a screen where you can choose a different template for, um, uh, for your workspace. And these workspaces, by the way, are, are Linux workspaces. I think they're built on top of Ubuntu. Um, and I don't believe that you'll be able to create any private workspaces. And I think that it's all based on um, the way that you're, um, you're paying for your account. Um, so at the moment, I have the free version of uh, uh, that I'm using for this particular video. I think for, uh, for my regular class instance, um, actually it'll be the same thing. It'll also be a, uh, an educator license, although it will still limit the number of private workspaces that I can create. Okay, so um, looking here, I'm going to create a workspace. Uh, and typically the way that I want you to do this is to create a workspace based on uh, your name. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to say Gnod. And then also, uh, you're going to have several of these workspaces that you'll create throughout the semester. So I'm going to create one uh, based on whatever assignment that you're doing. I'm going to just number this 00, zero for the moment. So this, <clears throat> this is a demonstration workspace. Wondering why colored red. Um, okay, we'll see here in a moment. And then I'm going to choose Ruby as my template. And so what this is going to do is create a workspace in Linux that is already configured to run Ruby on Rails, which is exactly what I want because that's the environment that we'll be using this semester. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click on create workspace. Oh, here's why. Um, lowercase letters. So, change that. 
I'll create my workspace. So one of the things that's nice here is that it doesn't take very long for a new instance to be created. So it'll create um, a, uh, a virtual machine uh, as well as uh, instantiate it with everything that's needed in the image to uh, be able to run Ruby on Rails. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is my, uh, my environment. Now, a couple of things I want to show you here is that um, down here on the bottom portion of the screen, this is where you can create a new instances of um, terminal sessions. So I can create a new terminal, and this is basically running um, Linux here. So I can do things like run any number of Linux commands. Um, uh, for instance, ls is to create a listing. Now, for some of you that haven't ever taken our 2500 class, the, um, the Unix laboratory course, there is a video that's available that um, will give you the basics of, of running commands in Linux and doing things in the command line. That is obviously something that will be a big part of what we do this semester. Now, if you look here up on the left-hand side, um, this is a file navigator. You've seen these before, so that's basically all that is. Um, if you select the file, so I'm going to select one of these files. Um, I'll just use gem file. Double-click on that. You'll notice that um, the screen here um, shows me an editor that I can use um, to edit files. And I don't really think you care what the gem file is exactly at the moment, but uh, the main point here is that I have myself a fully functional editor that I can use, um, all within the web browser, which is a really important fact. because This means that we'll be able to do development from anywhere, or at least you'll be able to do development from anywhere that um, has a, uh, a web connection. So if you're using your laptop from home, or you're at school working in the library, or wherever it is, um, in a lab, you name it, someone else's computer, sure, uh, you'll be able to access um, the site um, with, uh, uh, with that device. What I haven't tried here is to see whether or not this will work um, with something like uh, uh, an iPad um, or an Android tablet. Um, it's something I want to try here in the near future. Um, anyway, th another thing that you can do here is um, you can set your settings here uh, to configure your, uh, your editor. Um, you can also share your workspace with, uh, with other users. So, for instance, um, you would, uh, for your assignments, will want to assign, or sorry, share uh, your workspace with me so that I can access it. Um, Anyway, there's a number of other things that you can do with this, uh, with this tool. I'm going to leave it to you to spend some time playing around with it. Um, but um, you know, as we go through developing software with, um, uh, with Cloud9, uh, you'll be making quite a bit of use of this particular tool set. Um, and so you'll want to get yourself familiarized with, uh, with this environment. Uh, and as you run through some of the uh, um, some of the, uh, the tutorials and some, through some of the lectures, um, you'll be using um, this environment to do that. Um, so you'll want to become familiar with, uh, with the way that this all works. So anyway, that concludes uh, this particular lecture. If you have any questions, please post them online to uh, the course website or uh, to the uh, the YouTube channel.